Do you believe in fate? Do you believe that things are meant to be? That things that happen in life happen for a reason? I have a different view on this. I believe that most of what happens in our lives is a consequence of the choices that we make. Now, some choices that we make are pretty basic and routine, like, when do we get up? Or what are we going to have for breakfast? Other choices that we make are much more profound, like, whom are we going to marry? Or where will we live? And there are things that happen in our lives that we don't choose to have happen. I didn't choose to suffer a catastrophic injury that day. I don't believe that you, friend, relative, somebody you may know, chose to be diagnosed with some terrible illness or disease. We do exercise choice in how we respond to those involuntary events. I contend that I am by choice. I contend that you are by choice. Back in 2007, I would describe myself as kind of a, a recreational enthusiast. I love the outdoors. I love camping, climbing, backpacking, hiking, canoeing, skiing, road cycling. I had a great passion for road cycling. Unfortunately, in June of that year, 2007, I was involved in a very bad road cycling accident that rendered me an incomplete quadriplegic. What that means is that I have paralysis from my mid-chest all the way down to my toes. What it also means is that I have a very small window of potential to recover lost function. Now, how much function that I lost that I might be able to regain was unknown. You see, in this world of incomplete quadriplegia, the spectrum of recovery is very broad. On one hand, some people, unfortunately, are never able to get out of a wheelchair. And on the other end of the spectrum, you have some folks that are living completely capable, independent lives. And then you have the whole gamut in between. And I would ask my doctors all the time, am I going to walk again? Will I exercise again? Will I drive again? Will I work again? And I always received the same answer. Jamie, it depends on the neurological progression. We've all been to the doctors with questions, and sometimes we come away from those appointments with even more questions. I found myself living in this cone of uncertainty, not knowing what my future prognosis, my future outcome, my future capabilities might be. And it was very frustrating not to know. A few days after I had been admitted to the hospital, I'd gone through intensive care, went through acute care, and then I was admitted into the inpatient rehab department. It was the fifth night that I was in the hospital. And it was the longest night of my life. I lay there in that hospital bed, motionless, despondent, filled with this jumbled set of emotions. I was sweating profusely. I couldn't stop perspiring. The sheets underneath me were soaked. And I was scared, frightened like I've never been frightened in my life. I was sad, depressed, angry, livid. How could this have happened to me? I mean, what did I do wrong? And as I lay there, you ever had that kind of visceral reaction in your gut? And this emotion is just building and grinding, and all of a sudden you just want to explode in agony? You ever been in a place like that? You ever been so down, bummed out? low, depressed, and the tears just start coming, and you can't stop. 
That's where I was that night. My life, I was a broken man. My life shattered in an instant. And I realized at that moment that my life had come to a fork in the road. Which way was I going to go? Was I going to succumb, give in, surrender, let this injury win and defeat me? It had been so easy because every cell in my body was screaming at the top of its lungs, Jamie, don't. The mountain's too high, the journey's too difficult, the trail's too risky. Or I could choose to fight the good fight, give it everything I had, what it takes for as long as it was going to take. And I say, lay there in that bed, motionless in those sweat-soaked sheets. My mind drifted back to a conversation I had earlier with my physician. And in the course of that conversation, he said to me, Jamie, you need to choose. Get independent. Jamie, get independent. And I reflected on that some more as I lay in those sweat-soaked sheets. And then the light bulb went off. I got it. There it was, my vector, my beacon, my choice. And I resolved that night to do everything in my power not to be enabled by anyone or anything. I didn't want somebody to have to dress me. I didn't want somebody to have to feed me. I didn't want somebody to have to take care of my personal hygiene. I did not want to live my life in a wheelchair. In short, I defined my terms. I resolved to take a stand. I chose to win. Now, when I say winning, I don't mean winning in the absolute sense of I'm going to score more points than you, or I'm going to come in first and you're not. I'm talking about winning on my terms, not on what population studies and medicine suggested was a likely recovery trajectory for incomplete quadriplegics, because if that was the case, I'd likely still be in a wheelchair today. And as I sat there, I made that decision, that choice to get independent. It has guided every step of my recovery over the last 10 years. I chose how I was going to rebuild my life. I chose how hard I was going to work. I chose what goals I was going to set for myself. And that night, making that decision to get independent, has been my guiding light. And it has been monumentally difficult work. I'm not going to whitewash it. This is a cruel and relentless injury. And as I fought the good fight, I came to this point that I knew I was going to get better. There have been roadblocks along the way. I have impediments. I have issues. I have residual deficits. One of the more annoying things that I have to deal with is that I have a compromised bladder. I'm incontinent. And when my bladder squawks, I got to get from point A to point bathroom right away, or I'm going to have an accident. And even if I try to take all those precautions, sometimes I still have accidents. And if I'm driving around the Seattle area, I know where every bathroom is, Costco, Starbucks. And if I happen to be driving outside of the western Washington area, 
And my bladder comes calling. It's off to the side of the road. Pull over. Pride, ego goes out the window. Do the best I can to disguise myself and bladder wins. And I have other residual deficits that I have to deal with. Other headwinds that I have to push through. But I will not let these forces derail my choice to get independent. I remember in the early days when I was in the hospital and I was just trying to bring my two fingers together, my forefinger and my thumb, and how painstakingly slow and difficult it was to be able to do that. And then I was able to. And that little seemingly benign, innocuous goal became a victory. And then over the ensuing days, weeks, months, and years, it became this gradual, cumulative progression of goals and victories. And then the goals became more ambitious. And then the goals became more audacious. So much so, culminating in something really cool that happened this past Christmas that I would like to share with you now. Greetings, all. We are now on the seventh heaven lift. And we are on our way up to the top on uh, a ridiculously perfect day after the most intense snowfall I think I've ever experienced yesterday. I am on seventh heaven. Yeah, baby, yeah. Home. And we're going to start making our way down. Yeah! Woo-hoo! Yeah, baby! All right. Here we go. Let's go. I had visualized this day for years. I had choreographed this movie of what it would be like in my head. And I had thought about it in its greatest detail, what it would be like to be on skis. How would I get in my ski gear? How would I clip on skis? What would it be like to be able to balance and turn and be able to stop? How would I dose my medications correctly? Who would be with me? What trails was I going to take? What mountain was I going to be on? All these things were choreographed and visualized in my mind in the greatest detail. And the movie played out just as I had pictured it. Yes, it was emotional. It was epic. It was a day for the ages. So what's out there for you? What's aspirational in your life? What's something that you want to strive for? Something that you want to achieve and accomplish? And my ask is that you consider doing this. Fill in this phrase. I choose to what? I choose to what? Fill in that blank. In fact, if you could take it a step further, my ask is that you consider writing that down, perhaps on a 3 by 5 card or someplace where you can see it, that phrase, I choose to. And then begin that process of building that movie in your head of what achieving that looks like. Break it down into its finest detail and begin to put that together into a movie where you are the author and the editor, the publisher, the scriptwriter, the actor, producer, and director of your movie. And I submit to you that if you do this with unwavering resolve, commitment, and determination that what you may feel is too daunting, too extreme, too far out there, maybe even seemingly impossible, can actually happen. I chose. You can choose too by defining your terms, resolving to take a stand, 
choose to win. Choose to win. Thank you.